there and welcome to Dukoscopy TV. I'm Darren McDermott bringing you another episode of Hollenbeck Unleashed. Well, we have a special treat for you in store today. We're going to have a look at Big Macs and the whole idea of the Big Mac Index. Now, Burgernomics was a term that was coined back in 1986 by The Economist when it launched the Big Mac Index. Now, the whole idea is based on purchasing power parity and the idea that a dollar can get you the same amount in different countries. Now, Frank, I know you did an interview with Peter Lovegrove last year on this. Now, kind of, can you tell us some of the latest developments in this? Well, first, uh, let me say something about uh, purchasing power parity. It's uh, essentially the uh, manifestation of the law of one price, which was developed in the 16th century in Spain. And the law of one price, let me give you an example. Suppose that the price of gold in Europe is a thousand uh, euros per ounce, and it's a thousand two hundred dollars uh, per ounce in New York City, and the exchange rate is 1.3. That can occur. The reason is, is that I could purchase an ounce of gold in New York, okay, bring it over to uh, Paris, for example, sell it for a thousand euros, and then convert it into a thousand three hundred dollars and make a one hundred dollar profit. So what will happen is the price of gold in New York will either go up, the price of gold in Paris will go down, or the exchange rate will change, such that the exchange rate is essentially the ratio of the price of gold in, the, in New York relative to the price of gold in, uh, in, in Europe. Now, if we can do this for gold, then we can do this for all prices, and therefore we end up with a concept of purchasing power parity, where the exchange rate is essentially the ratio of prices in the U.S. divided by the prices in Europe. We also have the relative form of purchasing power parity, which says that the percentage change in the exchange rate is the percentage change of prices in the U.S. minus the percentage change in prices in uh, Europe. A lot of times uh, the relative form is preferred to the absolute form because uh, we don't necessarily measure prices correctly. Okay, And the relative form may be a better indicator of the uh, change in competitive position of a particular country. However, when we look at the relative form, we've seen, uh, for example, the um, euros appreciated 10% somewhat in the last six months, and we see that the yen has depreciated recently. Obviously, we haven't seen that much of a change in price to justify those changes in exchange rates. And the reason is, is that I made a statement. I said we could do this for gold, therefore we could do it for all prices. That's simply not true. In other words, we can arbitrage gold, but we can't arbitrage a haircut or a high dog. Okay? In other words, part of what is included in prices, which is usually proxied by either the CPI or the GDP deflator, includes of what we call a lot of non-traded goods. Okay? So in other words, when we talk about purchasing power parity, we should probably exclude non-traded goods and only look at traded goods. But even in the case of traded goods, uh, you can't expect the price of a Heineken uh, while you're having a meal looking over Manhattan to be the same price of a Heineken that you purchased to watch the World Cup. So in other words, when you consider that traded goods is the consumption of traded goods is not just the consumption of the good itself, but the consumption of the good in its environment, there are a lot of traded goods that also can be seen as non-traded goods. So we can say that purchasing power parity is actually limited to a relatively few uh, types of products, like maybe gold or oil. Now, in the case of the Big Mac, okay, one of the advantage of McDonald's is that you can go into McDonald's anywhere and basically order a Big Mac and get essentially the same product. So the idea is that if a uh, Big Mac is a same everywhere in the world, okay, then we can apply what we just said about gold, and therefore when we convert uh, the price of the Big Mac uh, into dollars, we should expect uh, the conversion to give us the same dollar prices. And what the economist has said is that if we convert and we get uh, a price that's above the U.S. price, it means that currency is overvalued, and if you get a price that's under that price, we say that it's undervalued. Now, obviously there are several problems with the Big Mac index. First, we're talking about a non-traded good. But the, most, the biggest problem with the Big Mac index is that um, 
the cost of the Big Mac is not the bun and the meat that make up the Big Mac. It's usually the labor and all the other costs that go in. For example, labor is 45% of the cost of a Big Mac. So for me, the, uh, the concept of a Big Mac is probably a good indicator of the relative input costs between countries, but it really shouldn't be used as a measure of the overvaluation or undervaluation of a currency. Now, I can understand that the economists can get away with it because they're trying to sell newspapers. But I find it difficult when uh, professional economists look at the Big Mac or use a Big Mac to uh, make a statement about the currency being overvalued or undervalued. Well, Frank, speaking about currencies being overvalued here in Switzerland, many economists actually believe the Swiss franc is overvalued. Now, what is your opinion on this? Well, most economists, when they talk about a currency being overvalued or undervalued, are looking at purchasing power parity or an economic model where purchasing power parity is embedded in the model. And we've already talked about the fact that purchasing power parity is probably not a good guide of what an exchange rate should be. For example, uh, a currency is determined like any other product. It's determined by supply and demand. In other words, it's determined just like the price of potatoes are determined or just like the price of rice is determined. But we don't say that rice is overvalued or rice is undervalued and we don't say that potatoes are overvalued or that that any other product is under or overvalued. Uh, for me, in my opinion, uh, an economist that talks about an overvaluation or an undervaluation of a currency should have their PhD taken away from them. <laughs> Frank, uh, that is quite a dramatic statement. Now, I'm not shocked because you always have quite dramatic stuff to tell us here on Holland Back on Leach on Dukoscopy TV. Okay, thanks, Frank. Well, uh, viewers, do click back to the website for more interesting interviews and press reviews. And of course, have a look at Frank's uh, dramatic statements that he likes to make here on Holland Back on Leach with Dukoscopy TV. All right, goodbye for now.